Hello all, I'm Kaylin North, and today we're going to be taking on a level 6 adversary matchup. We're going to use Keeper of the Forbidden Wilds to try and take down England 6. We're going to be playing with Branch and Claw and events turned on, um, and we're going to be playing on board B to see how we can do with that. Alright, Invader's start in the jungle, which is, I think, really good for us, actually, because we've got the wilds in land 8 to begin with, and so uh, no explore in land 8, and not enough towns or cities for the adjacency build means we have one less land to be a problem. Um, I'm going to start by gaining a power card, gain a miner, and uh, I'd really like to see a defend power here if I could to try and hit land 4 with next turn. Uh, I don't, though, so I'm thinking between all of these that Gift of Power or Swarming Wasps is probably the most interesting. Razor Sharp Undergrowth and Steam Vents both cost one, and while we do stand a good chance of thresholding Steam Vents this game and destroying towns with it, it's probably not going to be that early, and it's probably going to be a little underwhelming for us. Uh, similarly, Razor Sharp Undergrowth gets to add Wilds tokens, which is cool, destroys Explorers, defends two, um, but... None of it is going to be enough, I think, for what we're trying to do here. Swarming Wasps has Fire Element and costs zero, which is really nice. Getting Beasts for incidental value can be huge sometimes, um, although less so against England, because usually the Beast events that we care about only deal two damage per Beast at most. Um, or kill Explorers, which it doesn't do a lot against England. So I think Gift of Power is what I want to take here, uh, largely because it costs zero and will let us keep digging through the power deck for something that's going to get us uh, a defend power. Growth, I'm going to take from the top track, grow into land 8, push the Dahan into land 7. Reason being, I'm hoping to grow into land 7 next turn, push the Dahan to land 4, and then set up a defend. Uh, and then I'm going to play Boon of Growing Power, turn 1, and set up Spreading Wilds. So invaders build in the jungle, explore in the mountains. All right, that's good. Um, we can Spreading Wilds, that Explorer, from land 7. I'm going to stick them in land 5, actually. Hang out with the Beast token, see if we get lucky with an event to just eat that Explorer. Um, we could also have put them in land 6, potentially, and hit them with Towering Wrath later on, but I don't think that's as important. Um, Boon of Growing Power, gain a Miner, and Sap the Strength of Multitudes. Uh, we don't have anything with Air right now, but we might get something with Air. Call to Isolation is also kind of interesting. We could just push everything out of land 4. Um, hmm. I think, I think that because it has the sun and air elements that I'm more inclined to go for Call to Isolation here. Um, but Sap the Strength of Multitudes is also really tempting just because if we can get the Dahan into land 4 and we can draft anything that has air next turn... We can play it and set up a defend, which will help clear the inlands very nicely against England here. So I'm going to take Sap the Strength of Multitudes, after all, and gamble a little bit on what power I gain. So I'm going to grow from the top track first into land 7, and then gain a minor, hoping for something with air or another defend power. All right, we didn't get anything with air, so that's a little unfortunate. But we did get access to growth through Sacrifice, which is utterly bonkers, um, especially on Keeper. Shadows of the Burning Forest, uh, which could be useful for stopping some stuff elsewhere. Uh, Song of Sanctity, which we could use to clean up some Blight, potentially. Uh, and Drought, which is really nice against England for the potential of taking out three towns and a city for one energy, if we can hit the Sun Threshold, which we probably can as Keeper. Um, so we've actually got, I think, four viable choices here. Um... I am going to. I'm going to be cheesy, and go ahead and take growth through sacrifice just to show you how ridiculous it can be. If you haven't seen growth through sacrifice games before, then, you know, I guess welcome to the welcome to the game and hope you have fun. It'll be it'll be interesting. Um, we didn't get what we needed for defense in land four, so we're probably going to end up taking. Uh, a Blight, losing a Dahan, and getting a Blight Cascade, um, most likely into land 3 or 5. But that's going to be okay, because we're about to start scaling so far past the invaders that they'll never be able to catch us again. So I'm going to grow into land 1, actually. And I'm going to play Growth Through Sacrifice, and uh, let's go with... 
Um, I'm going to go with regrow from roots to clean up one of the blight that we're about to take. Um, so growth through sacrifice. We're going to destroy a presence in land eight. Add a presence from the top track into land seven. Push the Dahan into land four. And let's see here. Towns and cities get plus one health. Lovely. Um, Prey on the unwary. Each beast destroys an explorer, which is nice. Actually, we set up for that. And then coming of age, we get to add a Dahan to a coastal land. So I'm going to go ahead and put a Dahan in land one. Uh, help with any cultural assimilation shenanigans that are coming up. Um, and then that Blight, I'm actually going to Cascade to land 5 um, because we have Presence surrounding land 5 and so it's going to be a little easier to deal with it um, by using something like Towering Wrath in the future. Uh, and then we're going to deal 4 damage to the town because we really don't want the town there. Vader's build in the mountains, we deny the adjacency build in 7, which is good. And then we get regrow from roots to clean up one of those blight. Um, and then spreading wilds, uh, we can use... Uh, we actually don't have any really good spots to use spreading wilds because we don't have enough, enough sun. So I'm going to use spreading wilds on land 8 to get another... I'd, I'd like to use it on land 3, but I can't. So I'm going to use it on land 8 to get another wilds there. All right, so mountains are going to ravage this turn. We're going to take a blight there. It's not going to be a big deal. Wetlands are going to build. We want to do something about that. Um, we're already in land one, and we have sapped the strength of the multitude. So if we can get some more Dahan into land one, uh, that'd be awesome. Um, in order to do that, we'd probably have to do something with Sacrosanct Wilds or cleaning up some blight first uh, so that we can actually grow into land four, for example. But we do get a chance to gain a power card before we do anything else this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and gain a fir our first major and see what we get. Um, well, we got my favorite card, Insatiable Hunger of the Swarm. But in the interests of, of evaluating all of them, uh, Strangling Firevine is ridiculously good as Keeper. Um, we would ne probably need to grow into land 3 to start using it, but adding wilds left and right... Destroying a bunch of explorers and then dealing damage based on wilds is amazing for us. Uh, Instruments of Their Own Ruin is a uh, really nice power, especially against England. You can hit a city with it, and then the city takes out a town. Um, I, I could take Instruments, grow into land 3, push the Dahan to land 2, and land 2 would basically be solved. Um, and that's really tempting as is, uh, just without any, any other comment on it. Insatiable Hunger of the Swarm, I love for just its pure damage potential and its fear potential, which are both things that you really need against England. Um, and so I'm tempted to take it and hit something like land 6 with it, or possibly even land 2 with it. But I don't think it's going to do enough, and I think we're going to run into problems with the Blight if we do that. Pyroclastic Flow is cool for the ability to de destroy all explorers, deal a little damage. We're probably not going to threshold it, though. We don't have that many air powers. So I think I want to take Instruments of Their Own Ruin this turn, because um, I think that's going to give us the best bang for our buck. And then I'm going to forget Regrow from Roots. I think that's our least useful power right now. And then I want to grow... Um, we're going to get 5 energy this turn. We could go up as high as getting 7 energy this turn and play 2 cards, or we can play three cards this turn and only get the five energy. I think I want to actually do that and go for the three card plays. So I'm going to grow into land three, place another presence in land three, go into three card plays, grow into land two, play instruments of their own ruin, and then also play, um, let's see, uh, gift of power and sap the strength of the multitude. Er, we don't need sap the strength of multitudes actually because we've got, we're going to have land two under control with instruments. So I'm going to play Sacrosanct Wilderness, actually, um, which is a little different than what I would normally do here, but that's nice. Um, so Sacrosanct Wilderness, we can push some Dahan uh, from land one into land two if we want, try, kind of as insurance. Um, I'm going to start with Instruments of Their Own Ruin, just hit the city, destroy the town, get that taken care of. And then I think I, think I do want to use Sacrosanct Wilderness to push Dahan from land one, mostly because I want to be able to use punish those who trespass in land one. Um, 
the the main reason I wouldn't do that is because I do want to set up a counterattack in land one or six next turn with Sap the Strength of Multitudes. So it's kind of a toss-up for me whether I do this to, to set set up the Dahan in land. Oh, I do I do need at least one more Dahan in land two to take out the Explorer. So I will push one there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push the other one also there, just to try and avoid any cultural assimilation whammies. Um, uh, increasing aggression, uh, that's not great for us because we didn't set up any defend in land two, so they will deal two damage there, kill a Dahan, but we have enough Dahan to fight back. Um, tend the land is good, we're going to get a Blight back on the card, and then Wee's Lung Outbreak. Um, we can stop the extra build in land six, so that's really good. All right, they build twice in the jungles, blight the sand or blight land two, which is not good for us, and explore in the mountains. Um, I'm going to allow the escalation build to happen in land one because we're already there. Um, I did want to use sap the strength of multitudes there to try and protect that land next turn, but I think we're going to have to do something a little different anyway. Um, we're probably going to play sap the strength and instruments of their own ruin or something akin to that. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the extra build there because I don't. I'd rather have them on the coast than going further inland with land four, for example. Um, spreading wilds, we can push an explorer, um, and I think the explorer I want to push is well, the one I want to push. Oh, I can push from land four because we cleaned up a blight. So I'll push that explorer into land one and then punish those who trespass to take out the two explorers. Um, gift of power. Um, absorb Corruption is kind of interesting. Being able to gather Blight and then remove it potentially. Elemental Boon is really interesting for being able to hit our thresholds. And Gold's Allure is tempting for the ability to set up Strife in the mountains. Um, as well as potentially get stuff out of range of land 7. Which I don't think we're going to be able to quite do this turn. So... I'm going to take Absorb Corruption. I think that that's going to be the strongest long game play for us. It's overpriced, but we're Keeper, so we have the money for it. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. All right. Now this turn, um, I want to grab Instruments of Their Own Ruin. And I think I want to play Instruments and Sacrosanct Wilderness. So I'm going to start by Reclaiming Cards. And then I'm going to place another Presence, and I'm going to go ahead and take... Um, I think I want the fourth card play right now, because that's going to be more impactful than the single plant element. Um, and we can get the plant element anyway with Growth Through Sacrifice if we really need to. So I'm going to go into land one. Um, excuse me, I'm not going to go into land one. I can I can uh, grow into land two, or land four rather, and then with Growth Through Sacrifice, I can put an extra presence in there, push those to Han to land one, and use that for a counterattack. So we'll go to four card plays, we're going to play Instruments, we're going to play... Uh, we don't need Sacrosanct Wilderness anymore, actually. So Growth Through Sacrifice, Sap the Strength of Multitudes, and I think I want to play Gift of power again. Um, that's going to set us up for a lot of damage in land one. We're going to take a blight in land six, but that's fine. They're going to build in lands two and seven, which is not good, but I don't think there's anything we can really do to stop it right now. So I'm going to start with instruments. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to start with Growth Through Sacrifice. Uh, we'll take a presence from land 7. I'm going to go ahead and add a presence in land 4. Um, I'll take the plant element. We can get the 5 and reclaim one next turn if we want it. Um, push the Dahan into land 1. Instruments of their own ruin now on the city. Kill a town. Gets us a fear card, which is good. That'll stop the triple build in the mountains. So we only get a double build. 
and then sap the strength of multitudes for the rest of the defense we need there. Um, urban development, uh, that's fine. The only city that's going to be ravaging has strife. Uh, lingering plagues is nice. We'll get some disease back on the board and fierce mean i think it's us a one fear which is which is not not nothing um i'm gonna go ahead and put the disease in land six because i really don't want them building inland and that wetland is at risk of double building next turn um we remove a explorer so that's nice i guess ravage in the wetlands we take out the city Take the Blight and land six, they build in the mountains again, and explore the coastal lands. Alright, now, we have punished those who trespass this turn, which is going to be able to hit for four damage, which we can use to take out the city and land four, or the city and land seven, uh, either of which would be good here. Um, we don't really want to use it in land one, uh, just because we've got the town there plus a bunch of Dahan. Um, but I do want to use Gift of Power first here, just see what we get uh, to help deal with next turn's Mountain Ravage. Um, I think that with grabbing Veil, uh, well, we can just Instruments their own Ruin in land 2 to solve that land again. So we really just need a solution for land 7. Um... I, I'm inclined to try and take Veil the Knight's Hunt, make a sacred site in land one to push them to Han over to, say, land five or six, and then push them into land seven and do some kind of defend their next turn. Um, we could also do Call of the Han Ways. Uh, getting more Dahan is always really nice. Um, getting rid of English towns is always really nice, and we're often going to have that moon. Um, Drift Down into Slumber is less useful right now, um, just because the only... Jungler sand that's going to be ravaging in the next couple turns is this one in land three that we've already got pretty well contained. So I think I'm going to take Veil the Knight's Hunt uh, just to get that extra Dahan movement. Then, um, Spreading Wilds, I want to... Um, where do I want to put a Wilds token? I think I want to put a Wilds token in land seven. Um... And then punish those who trespass to take out the city. Um, then this turn we can gain another major uh, and do that first if we want. Uh, we did. I did talk about trying to set up uh, a play with gift instruments of their own ruin, which we could uncover our reclaim one spot in order to do that this turn, which I think is going to be our best bet. So I'm going to gain a major power. Um, jungle Hungers is great. Uh, we can probably threshold that, and that will just about win us the game, I think. So I'm going to take Jungle Hungers. Um, I'll go ahead and forget Gift of Power at this point. Uh, place a Presence um, in land... Do, 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 do. We're going to place the Presence in land one. Push those to Han into land six, uh, land five. I'll push them into land five. I'm going to push them to land seven momentarily anyway, but it, it'll be fine either way. And then we go right, gain another presence and go up to seven energy. So, um, reclaim one. I want to take back instruments of their own ruin. I'm going to play instruments. I'm going to play uh, Veil the Knight's Hunt. Uh, can we actually Threshold Instruments this turn? Um, I think we can. We would need to play... Oh no, we, we can't do it. We don't have enough energy. Um, so Veil the Knight's Hunt, um, and then I was thinking of going for... Absorb Corruption, and probably Boon of Growing Power here. Um, this gets us enough to take care of land 7 after it blights, at least. Um, we solve land 2 reasonably well. The coastal lands build, but there's not too much we can do to stop that. And so I think this will be alright. So I'm going to instruments their own ruin, hit the city, destroy the town. Um, 
Veil the Knight's Hunt, push the Dahan from land 5 into land 7. We're not going to set up any defend or anything there. We're just going to plan on taking it out with Punish Those Who Trespass. Um, Sacred Sight's under threat. Um, okay. Uh, we are aided by fire here, which we have quite a bit of fire available to us. And... Um, we're not going to get the Spirit Speaker solve Riddles of Power, unfortunately. So I'm going to I'm gonna go for Guard Yourself here. And I'm going to just discard Towering Wrath, I think. Um, and then... Oh... I, I actually... Hmm. This is a little obnoxious, because we've actually got three Sacred Sites... Um, that this is going to be a problem in. And so I'm I'm actually thinking now maybe I want to let the island strength repulse them uh, because that'll let me just concentrate invaders some for hopefully a big Towering Wrath next turn or something like that. Um, it will flip to Blighted Island, which is not ideal, but I think that's, I think that's worth it here. So I'm going to go ahead and repulse. Um, so we'll push from land 7. I'm going to go ahead and push to land 4. We're going to let land 4 become a major problem here. Um, push to land 4. Uh, push one town to land 5. And push the explorer into land 4 as well. And a pall upon the land. We destroy a presence. All right, we'll lose the presence in land 8. That's not a big deal. And we get to remove a town. Um, I'd really like to remove that town from land six, uh, I think, because then then we don't have any buildings touching land eight, which potentially saves us the wilds. So that's neat. Uh, each player adds a strife in a land with Dahan, so we will strife the explorer. Um, they build in the wetlands, ravage in the mountains, build in the coastal lands. They build in all of them, unfortunately, because that jungle is getting out of control. And then we get to punish those who trespass, absorb corruption, spreading wilds, and boon of growing power. So I'm going to absorb corruption. I want to grab the blight from land two, I think, and pull it into land four, and then clean it up. And then boon of growing power, I want to gain a major because um, I want to get some heavy hitters here to try and help finish off the game um, with this we're gonna have an interesting interesting case with these uh, these builds next turn so we'll gain a major um, Tigers hunting is really cool um, probably not cool enough death falls gently from open blossoms um, again potentially useful but not as useful as I'd like it to be I might take Tiger's Hunting and just start spamming it on land four. Um, poisoned land is tempting, but I don't really like it on Keeper. Um, I think, yeah, the more I look at this, the more I'm just going to take Tiger's Hunting and not worry about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and forget... Uh, let's forget Growth Through Sacrifice at this point. We've We've gotten enough benefit out of it. Um, and then punish those who trespass. We'll deal two damage somewhere. Um, we can push. Well, no. There, there's. We're gonna hit. We're gonna hit one explorer basically. And then spreading wilds gets us a wilds token. I'm gonna go ahead and go into land two with that so that I can grow their next turn. All right. Now this turn, coastal lands are going to ravage, so we need to do something about the coastal lands. Um, what I want to do is I want to reclaim. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I want to reclaim all of our cards this turn um, because I think that lets us solve the coastal lands as best as possible because we can play sap the string, the multitudes, and instruments of their own ruin that way, um, and possibly some of the other ones in there too, but. We'll, we'll go ahead and reclaim, place a presence. Uh, I'm gonna place a presence into land two so that I can uh, very easily hit Sap the String of the Multitudes there. 
Um, so stop the string of the multitudes. I'm going to use Instruments of Their Own Ruin on land one to try and help solve that land. I'm going to play Tiger's Hunting to start pinging away at land four. Um, let's see. Jungles are about to build again. So I think I want to... Uh, oh, I want to jungle hungers. What am I talking about? I want to jungle hungers for sure. Um, and I want to get another plant for that so that I can threshold it. So we're going to play Boon of Growing Power. Because um, then threshold of jungle hungers in land four will be amazing. So... Um, I'm going to Instruments of Their Own Ruin in land one. Strife the city, damage the town, sap the strength of multitudes in land two, uh, tigers hunting in land four, gather the beast in, deal two damage to a city, uh, push the beasts to land three, where they then will deal uh, one damage plus one damage per beast to take out that town. All right, heavy farming. That's not actually going to hurt us. Oh, no, wait, we're on overcrowded cities. Excuse me. Um, add a blight to a land with city. Um, we can stop it by destroying two presents. I will go ahead and destroy two presents. I can add a blight to land one, but I'm going to instead destroy the two presents. Um, I think I'm going to destroy the two presents in land three. Um, and then overcrowded cities, jungle and wetlands. Uh, during the next normal build, skip the lowest numbered land, matching the invader card. That's lovely. Invaders build in the mountains, ravage in the coastal lands. We can take out the city and deal damage to the town. Build in the jungles and explore in the sands. All right, now jungle hungers is going to mostly clear land four. We'll take out the city as well. And then we can actually finish that off uh, very nicely here with Punish Those Who Trespass. So I'm going to do that. Um, Jungle Ravage then is taken care of. Uh, and we can Boon of Growing Power, gain a new ma major power to th hammer with next turn. And Pent Up Calamity looks lovely. Um, Twisted Flowers Murmur Ultimatums also looks lovely. Um, I think with the sands about to build and the coastal lands about to build, um, I'm slightly more leaning towards pent up calamity just because I think that's going to combo nicely with tigers hunting. Um, yeah. And yeah, let's, let's take pent up calamity. Um, I'm going to go ahead and forget uh, let's see, we're going to get Ravages in the Jungle. I'm going to forget Sap the String of the Multitudes. I think it's done its job. And then I get to push Explorers. I'm going to push the Explorer from land 3 into land 2, which should stop the build in land 3 uh, from the Coastal Lands build. It won't stop the build from the Sands build because the Coastal Lands will build in land 2 and blah, 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 blue to blue. It's a mess. Um, but we can still hammer things pretty effectively this turn with something like Pent Up Calamity, plus Towering Wrath, plus Veil the Knight's Hunt. Um, we can reclaim instruments of their own ruin if we want to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reclaim Tiger's Hunting, I think, actually. Uh, I think that's going to be the more useful one here, slightly. And then I'm going to... I, you know, I say that's going to be the more useful one, and then I say I'm going to actually just reclaim all of my cards. Um, and then place my last presence down, um, I think, in land two, pushing the Dahan out from there. So we will push all of the Dahan into land one. And then, um, actually, not into land one. Uh, if we push them into... If we push them into land three instead, then we can hit land one with Towering Wrath this turn and take it out that way. And we can potentially get a counterattack next turn on land three. So we'll play Towering Wrath, uh, Jungle Hungers, 
tiger hunting, um, pent up calamity, and that's all we can afford. Um, I don't want to do all of that then. I will take back pent up calamity. I'll play Veil the Knight's Hunt instead, which I think we need, what, one more animal to get that? Oh, we don't actually have one more animal to get that. So let's not play Towering Wrath. Let's play Pent Up Calamity instead. And then we can play Boon of Growing Power as our fifth card. And that should give us a Thresholded Tiger's Hunting. Uh, we don't have Thresholded uh, Pent Up Calamity, unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, we should still be able to, I think, just win off of this pretty easily because we've got a Thresholded Jungle Hungers coming as well. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, Tiger's Hunting in land two, gather in a beast, um, deal, I guess, two damage to the town. Because um, I was going to pent up Calamity there as well. Um, and take out the wilds token. So it doesn't matter where I deal the damage. So I'll push, and then I'll push the beasts into land one, where they'll deal three damage to the city. Um, pent up calamity, uh, remove the wilds token, deal damage in fear, and veil the knight's hunt. Um, I'm going to push uh, the Dahan from land seven. Um, we could damage the town, but I don't think that's going to help us very much. I'm going to push the Dahan into land 5. Um, which is probably where we're going to jungle hungers, but we have the threshold, so it should be safe. Alright, population rises. Or no, no, sorry, power fades. Um, Alright, so I think I'm going to just go ahead and remove a Blight from the card. I think that's safe here. We could do one of the others. Uh, we probably could forget two powers safely, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let that happen. Um, we will put our disease token. I'm gonna put the disease token in land seven. Um, all right. So each player removes an explorer or town from a land with the tokens, or at least two to Han. So I can actually take out the town in land seven. Uh, we can add a strife to a town. And then I will put the strife in land one to kill that city. Immigration, jungle build, sands build. Sands and wetlands explore, which isn't an issue because we just win now off of the jungle hungers, taking out everything plus the city, and that's game. So that's Keeper versus England 6. Uh, it's a bit of a slog. Um, I'm probably not the best Keeper player out there, and so it's possible there were some other paths that would have led us to a quicker victory. But I think it's definitely an interesting one still. Um, yeah, 71 points, okay. Uh, we only had four cards left in the Invader deck, so that's not great. But yeah. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have thoughts, things that I missed, different opinions on strategies, anything you want to, me to look at in the future, you know, let me know in the comments section below or join me on Discord. We'd love to have you there. Thanks so much for watching.